Don't know about you, but if I think of plugins, I mean unique and handy features in a easy to use package. But then another thing comes to my mind. Yeah, you probably used or even made some Ableton racks yourself and totally forgot about them because they looked and felt worse than the plugin you spent $60 on. Congratulations. You played yourself. Now, what if I told you that racks can give you the same functionality as some plugins while still looking cleaner than some game-changing VSTs I got asked to promote from time to time? If you had no idea or need a reminder, you can make audio effects, instruments, or combine both. Let's start simple, a rack that can spice up those vocal chops. I made some templates for you to use as a starting point and I think this parallel one will do the job here at least for now. So as you can see you have two effect slots. So let's load hybrid reverb on effect one and do the same thing but with echo on slot two. We obviously need to put dry and wet knob on both to 100%. Now, the amount of FX1 goes to the same volume as dry signal. But if you really need to fine tune it, you can also use this global dry and wet knob. And no worries, I will explain how everything works in a minute, but first let's actually do a little bit of a starting point for both reverb and delay. So let's drag the amount of reverb a little bit down. And I think that will do for now. Let's increase the echo. Now we can set up some macros to quickly adjust reverb and delay times. So let's click this plus icon to reveal some macros to use. And let's start with reverb actually. We have DK, so let's assign the DK time to the first available macro, which is the macro 4. And go to our delay section. And then let's put the sync delay time to macro 5. Yeah, but chances are you don't want to turn it into an ambience machine by allowing this amount of reverb. So that's where the mapping menu comes into play. For now, it looks quite clean, but it can get messy sometimes. So just remember, always color code your macros. And in fact, I need to color code those ones. So let's do a pink. We can actually set minimum and maximum values. So let's actually put minimum to, I guess, 200 milliseconds for now. And the maximum value, let's drag it down to be maybe five seconds. Unfortunately, mapping menu is not always that intuitive, especially as we talk about single buttons, like for example, this sync one inside our echo. So once I assign it to macro six, it obviously works, but in a bit of weird way. So right at the middle, we can set it to sync, but then a little bit down, we can set it to time and it gets a little bit tricky. But luckily there is a workaround for that. If I change the minimum value to 0 0.005 and then the maximum one to zero, I only need to drag this knob a little bit up and now it's set to sync. So it kind of works like a on and off switch. Okay, so we made a quick and easy space plugin, but chances are you're gonna use some effects before it to not let people know that this mysterious chop you did is just yet another loop from Splice. A good place to start is the new Auto Shift plugin, since as Grammy producers say, once you pitch the vocal right, it can save your ass from copyright. <laughs> Yes, I made it up, but you know the deal. So to make it a little bit cleaner, let's collapse this to be just the effects amount, global dry and wet knob and everything we set up before. And now we can actually group both Auto Shift and our space plugin. And now let's only transfer some macros since this will be our main plugin rack window. So we just basically transferring our macros to control the rack inside the rack. Key thing to map inside auto shift would be the pitch knob. So we can assign it to macro six 
a formant one maybe, we can assign it to macro 7. So now we are not only able to control some parameters from auto shift, but we can also control our effects, we set it up before. And now it's time for the creme de la creme of Ableton Racks. Presets inside presets. First, let's put another template of mine between auto shift and our effects rack. And that actually gonna be this one. It has 10 slots for different effects. And to show you how it works, I actually prepared three basic effects of camera. And obviously, as the template suggests, I left the first one as a dry signal. So to switch between those effects, we're gonna use this macro, which I mapped to chain selector. Yeah, but what the f is chain selector? If you click this button, you can see that all of those effects are spread from 0 to 127. And this guy here is our chain selector. Once I move it, it basically switches on and off between different effect slots. But once again, we aim to conquer plugins with their ease of use. And using one little macro to control different presets is not ideal. Luckily, that's where variations come into play. So once you click on your main effect rack, which includes all of the effects we used before, and click this little button, it allows for macro variations. We only need to transfer this effect slot selector to our macro 9. Let's put effect slot selector to dry signal and set it up as a first variation. To not confuse you, let's rename it to dry. Now I can move the slot selector to our first effect and then simply create new variation and rename it FX1. Same goes for other effects. And yeah, it can be a tedious thing to do, but once again, I got you back with an easy to use already mapped template in the description. There is also a little bonus, a vocal chops rack I did using this exact method. But that's only the top of an iceberg of racks. Effect ones are cool, but instrument ones bring the most fun. So let's start with the simple sound I made inside Wavetable. Once I group it, I basically have an option to assign different macros to different parameters. I guess we can play a little bit with the Wavetable position. So let's assign it to macro one. Then we can do something with with a mount, yeah, definitely, we could do something with a mount. Obviously, nothing holds you back from using effects as well, as I said at the beginning. So let's apply roar here. Then maybe we can assign another macro to the bias. Yeah, so let's map it to macro three. Yeah, we can now assign amount of FM modulation to macro 4 as well. So let's collapse it to not confuse you and make it look a little bit cleaner. And it's time for this little magic button. Yup, as you can hear, it's that sweet randomized button that many third-party plugins actually use nowadays, but not this type of bullshit. If you want a specific macro to be controllable only by hand or by the user of your preset, not by the randomization or variations, you can right-click and choose to exclude from both or either randomization or variations. So once I exclude this macro from randomization, it's a oscillator 2 effect, and I will try to make another random variation. As you can see, it stays here. And yes, you got me. That's exactly how I make presets inside my presets for stock synths. I should be done with a whole pack by the end of this year and no worries, I make presets both for standard and suit users. You can try to be quicker than me and make your own presets inside stock synths, but only after watching this video.